my friends, to the show that never ends. This is Red All Over's Away End Show, where we look at the opposition that we'll be facing shortly. To achieve this, we'll be talking to fans of the opposition, so I hope you enjoy the show. Finally, cast your mind back. I remember a four-year-old boy being lifted over the turnstiles to his first match at Oakwell, standing on the cop watching his heroes, heroes such as Barry Murphy. Now fast forward 60 odd years, the cop is now an all-seater stand and it's named the Barry Murphy stand after the legend. That four-year-old boy is now finally, after all these years, back on the away end. Enjoy the show. Roll the title. A warm red all of a welcome to Tim Fielding from Blackpool's Seasiders podcast. Welcome, good, Tim. Good to see you. Good evening. Okay, tell tell us a bit about yourself and a bit about your podcast, please, before we get into the meat of Barnsley away to Blackpool. Right. Well, uh, gosh, I've been a Blackpool fan now for too long, um, over forty years, probably heading towards um, fifty years. And um, you I, don't look uh, old enough. Did you, oh, did you start? Well, I am. I am, unfortunately. Um, so started sporting Blackpool in nineteen seventy nine. So uh, what's that? So it's forty five years anyway, isn't it? So um, actually, I, I was brought up as a very young child as a Liverpool fan by my father. But I soon saw the tangerine light and joined uh, joined joined the rest of the Blackpool fans in supporting them. Unfortunately, that coincided with our first year in Division Three ever, so that was not a particularly auspicious start. Um, so uh, yeah, been a Blackpool fan, season ticket holder for most of those years, and uh, as I mentioned um, in in the green room beforehand, um, uh, I became the chairman of the supporters trust at a rather difficult time for our club when we decided to go to war with our owners, as they then were, the Oystons. Um, and um, from there, actually, I had the privilege of representing fans on the board of directors as we had the transition to the new owners. Uh, so that was a great experience. And then um, in my spare time, I'm a podcaster with Seasiders Podcast. We've been going, I think John started originally in a Premier League year, so sort of 2010, 2011, and uh, I sort of joined when I became the BST chair because they used to go on and talk about what the trust was doing. And uh, he's he's kept me on for, for my sins ever since. So uh, so we, we, we broadcast like yourselves probably once a week most of the time, um, sometimes uh, twice. And uh, yeah, we have, a, we have a good crack with it. And obviously we like to have guests on ourselves and, and reciprocate as we're doing tonight where we can. Lovely. So your dad tried to get you to support Liverpool, did you say? Yeah, I did. The, f- the first league game I ever went to was Liverpool against Wolves in 1977. So, um, and I've been on the cop a few times with him. Um, but when I was, I think it was really when I started secondary school. Um, that's when uh, I sort of, um, all my mates were going to Blackpool and um, I sort of moved across to really support Blackpool from there. And and I sort of carried on supporting Liverpool for a bit for a few years. But by, by the time I was about 14 or 15, it was like pure Blackpool. So, uh so I was a bit late starting, really, and as a result, I missed us being quite a good team in the old second division in the uh, early to mid seventies. Don't think I'd have made early seventies to be honest, because I'd have been sort of three or four. But you know, mid seventies, I missed sort of missed out on that, which I sort of regret looking back that I didn't get a chance to go back then. If we don't mind, if I do, you don't don't mind me asking you, what's your dad's name? Ian. Ian Fielding. Fielding yeah. I'll sort it out. I'll sort it. Leave, leave it. Leave it with me. I'll sort it out for you, Tim. <laughs> Ian Fielding. Yeah, you're wrong. You're a wronging. <laughs> sort yourself out, right? Now, I've been sort of, I've been sort of that out, and you'll get asked about this later on in the later on in the show. Let me say this: we're going to be discussing Blackpool's style of play, formation, what players to look out for, who's going to go down in the box, the strengths, the weaknesses. All that and anything else that you want to talk about, anybody else. So let's get all over it, Tim. First yeah. and foremost, then tell me style of play and formation. Well, th- this this is probably the most controversial part of our season, really. Um, Neil Critchley was the manager who got us promoted, you might remember, during the COVID year. 
um, got us up to the championship. And then first season, we had quite a good season. We, we were mixing it things up a bit. And then he, he, he left to go and join Stevie Gerrard at Villa and then went to QPR. So he, he was reappointed uh, this close season because we had a bit of a disaster last year with our managers uh, and got relegated as a result. And we now doggedly, and depending on whether you're half glass half full or glass half empty, we doggedly play 5-3-2 or 3-5-2, whichever you want to call it. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it it's it's a rather marmite formation from our fans' perspective, to say the least, because most of us don't think we've actually got the players that actually suit the system. So what that's meant is a lot of square pegs in round holes all through the year. Um, when Neil was with us last time, he used to mix it up quite a bit. So sometimes we'd play that, and then sometimes we'd play a flat back four. But now it's like doggedly three centre backs, two wing backs. Um, uh, normally two or three then in the middle and then two up front. Uh, so we sometimes get, if we get a variation, it's one up front and another in midfield if we're playing certain teams or if certain players are out. But yeah, you, you, that, that's the system you'll see. Um, and the, the, it, as night follows day, we will never vary from it uh, at all at any point during the game. Whether we're playing well, obviously you're not going to change if we're playing well, or whether you're playing really badly, um, it carries on, and all you'll do is get players slotting into that system. You could be talking about Barnsley Football Club team. All right, okay. We play a very similar system, um, and, and and a very, well, I'm going to say a rigid system. It doesn't change much. Sometimes the personnel changes, but the system doesn't change a lot. And and it, again, it's been marmite across our fan mm. base about whether people want to, you know, a flat back four or five at the back or three at the back with wing back, all that. So I understand completely what you're saying. Mm. What I would ask you about is your recent performances because I don't think you've been beaten at home since late November. Uh, an yeah, incredible got... run. We are, there's, there's, there's a very stark contrast, um, uh, although we've won a couple recently away, but there's a very stark contrast between our home form, which for most of the season has been just about the best in the league, and our away form, which... Is, is is bizarre. Um, we actually play quite well against good teams, I would say, uh, and I include yourselves with that. And we came to your place and beat yeah. you. Um, we beat. Um, I did a little list actually. We beat. We've beaten Portsmouth away four nil. We've beaten Peterborough away two one. Um, and 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 then we lose to all the teams in the bottom half of the table. So. You know, we've lost to Port Vale, we've lost to Cheltenham, we've lost to Wigan are a mid sort of mid table, lost to Wigan, we've lost to Cambridge, we've lost to Burton, we've lost to Wickham. Um, and and there's there's a pattern to it. And 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 this sort of maybe, you know, when you talk about what one of our weaknesses, not our weak point necessarily, but one of our weaknesses is that I think we're quite easy to uh, uh to stop playing. If 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 a team sets up to stop us playing, not but not necessarily to play themselves, it can generally work quite well. Um, and so we we've lost a lot of games, one nil, um, uh, or, or or two nil, where we've hardly had a shot on target. The other t we're actually better than the other team, and we've got more possession, but um, we don't convert anything. And and I think for me that's that's one of the reasons why I do not like this system. Because I don't, a, I don't think we've got the, the players to play in it. But secondly, I think it's probably cost us, if not automatic promotion, most certainly a certain playoff spot. Because I, I tipped us to win the league at the beginning of this season. I, well, I didn't think I was being overly optimistic because I'm not, I'm not an optimistic person. But I genuinely thought we had the squad to win the league. And uh, maybe, maybe I'm, maybe I was wrong. But I don't think the systems helped us. I think we would, we, we are, it, we, we should be higher up in the league, in my view. A, a, a number of red all over supporters, you know, that that, that pay, pay some money towards keeping the you know the the channel going, equipment mm -hmm. and what have you, and and all the stuff that goes with it. That that so many tipped Blackpool to be in the top, if not the top two, sometimes the top two, but certainly yeah. the top six, easy, and it could come true. Mm -hmm. At the minute, you you seem to be winning one nil a lot. I I always remember. This, in Tony Adams's day, it were one nil to the Arsenal. No, I think it's mm. going to be one. It's always one nil to the Blackpool. The way it's going, just to keep it real, 
Um, in the last ten games, we scored five goals. That's. I think you should keep that going. <laughs> make, make it five. <laughs> Five now that, does, that, does, that, does, that does include uh, four one nil wins, I think, if I, if, if my maths is right. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, no, three one nil wins and a two nil win. So we, we, we it, it's 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 been it, to be honest. If you ask a lot of Blackpool fans, we are incredibly surprised that we've still got an opportunity to get into the playoffs um, at this point in the season because. We've been sort of stuck in eighth position, which we are again at the moment. We've been stuck in eighth position for what seems like an eternity. And we, you know, we win, we might win one, then we, you know, it's a very, um, there's not, we haven't been able to put a, 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 a sort of string of results together to push ourselves into that top six. And, and yes, we've won a few games recently, but, you know, if you look at it, um, we beat Fleetwood 1-0, um, not particularly convincingly, beat Carlisle one 0 not particularly convincingly. First minute um, goal against yeah, Carlisle, yeah. Firmly. yeah. Kept was, it tight for eighty nine minutes. That's for sure. I was up. I was up there. It was. I mean, it was very. Um, uh, the game was sort of uh, massively affected by the wind. It was quite. There was a wind running down the pitch. So sort of, we had it in the first half. They had it in the second, uh, and it wasn't a great game. And um, so we, we've we've struggled because Blackpool's had a fantastic. Uh, particularly at home, a fantastic and very vocal support. And hopefully we're going to see that on Saturday. But as the season's gone on, it's become quite difficult to watch. Even when we're even at the home games that we win, we, we don't I, I and lots of others feel it's not particularly an exciting way to play football. And um and uh you know the jury's still out um between the fans. Some say, well hang a minute, we it, we've got to realign ourselves with you know we we're, we're sort of upper half of the table. But a lot of others think it's been a bit of a wasted opportunity this year because I think next year is going to be a far more difficult division than this year with the teams coming up um, and the spending power that they've got and and the teams coming down. You know, you've got a couple of your local rivals look like they're heading down, don't they? And and then you've got Wrexham, you've got some momentum and you've got Stockport have got some momentum coming yeah. So I think it's, I think, I mean, I think it's going to be a lot great for the Northern teams. I think it's going to be a lot better uh, a lot. It's been a bit sort of southern centric this year, hasn't it? A lot of mm. games down south. Yeah. Um. But um. Hopefully more northern games. But I think I just don't. I think it's going to be a lot more difficult to get out of this league next year. I mean, I don't. I, it, pr presuming that we stay where we are, I, I have no problem with us playing Rotherham. I've like, mm. got a lot of time for Rotherham. You know, one of our near neighbours. Um. I don't live far from Rotherham's ground as it happens. It's very bizarre they've, appro they've appointed Evans again, isn't it? At it this that, point that has surprised season. me. I mean, I, I, I talk, I talk now and again with Matt Farley from from yeah. uh, Steve uh, Stevenage's podcast. And he's gutted, absolutely gutted. Um, why do why do it? You don't. If he's going to go, you, you'd think unless unless they've heard he's going and 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 yeah. and uh, Stevenage says, well, you might as well go now because you're not, you know, we don't want. But on the face of it, with two games to go, and they've still got an outsider chance of the playoffs themselves. I mean, they're playing Oxford, aren't they, on Friday night? Yeah. So from our perspective, we're thinking, geez, we, the last, man, we might get, yeah. you might get new manager bounce back, mightn't you? So we don't know. Well, we're keeping our fingers crossed for that. I don't, I'm yeah, sure, yeah. Sure well, we, we are. We, we'll, all, we'll all be keeping an eye on it on Friday night, I think. Don't, don't make me mention the other team from from near us that are coming <laughs> down because I can't, I can't bring myself to talk talk about them. <laughs> I, I, I never want to talk about them, so. The team that shall not be named. Yeah. We, uh, we we're in a similar a similar situation really. Again, um, there's been a lot of fans unhappy with our style of play at times. That find it boring passing it across the back three, one side and then the other side. And crab football we've been calling it mm. on this show. Um, the last few matches we've uh, we've started doing what what we always thought we would do, which was to press and to go forward with the ball. So. Last couple of matches has been a lot, lot better against Reading and then against Portsmouth the other night. Um, but over the season, it's there's been some. It, it, although, although <coughs> we're, we're fifth, there's been some. You know, uh, 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 the fan base in general have been quite uh, disaffected by the the style of play, and, and I hope you know. Hopefully, we're putting it right. Now, I know mm. you said you've been in, in eighth place for a while, but you've been winning games. The teams above you. Have had blips themselves, you know. Um, yeah, we, we've had some, we've certainly in the middle of a blip, although the performances are 
have been better the last couple of matches than before. Um, Peterborough have had blips, you know, but I think they're, you know, they're, they're, they're beyond it all. But Oxford up and down, Lincoln doing well and then have blips. You know, so it's anything could happen with two matches to go, anything at all. Yeah. So I, I did, did notice that um, unless unless it changes by Saturday morning, that Jordan Rhodes won't be able to, won't be playing, which for us no. had been brilliant because he and and I mean this quite honestly he mm. always scores against us whoever he plays for the team that must not be named Huddersfield you name you name it or don't name it he scores against Barnsley he always mm. scores against us well I can I can assure you he won't be playing on Saturday he's um he he was on a very rich vein of form when he joined mm. us um, and he scored a lot of goals quite quickly. I think he's on about 15, yeah, yeah. if I remember rightly. Um, and then he actually had a little bit of a dry spell and then had a, bit, a little bit of time out injured. Uh, and then uh, he came back and he'd only just come back and he got injured again when we played Wigan and we lost to Wigan. And uh, he, he pulled up and then came back on and then went down again. And from what we've been told... Uh, and a week or two ago, he's still in plaster. That right. in in the unlikely event that we got in the playoffs, that he would potentially be available for those. But but he's, he's he won't play in either of the next two games. And this is probably one of the reasons why uh, we've got such a, a a poor goal scoring record at the moment. In in, in even though we're w picking up a few points, is that we haven't really got anybody um who who's capable of scoring on a regular basis other than him you know we sold Jerry Yates last yeah. year he he always used to score a fair few for us um and um and and you know we we we, we took um uh Cal Joseph in as as uh, a replacement but whilst he's a technically a good player he's he's not score he's not a goal scorer in the same way that Yates was and Rhodes sort of filled that void for us and it's incredibly disappointing that um, you know his season's been curtailed because I think it'd have been a twenty-plus got without a shadow of a doubt twenty-plus. It might even been heading higher up towards thirty if he if he played. But since Christmas, he's hardly played. So, and uh, we we noticed uh, weeks and weeks ago that that you sold Kenny Dougal, our old player who we loved. We loved yeah. Kenny at uh, uh, Oakwell. We surprised because I thought he'd run the show when you play when you when you won at, at, at Oakwell early on in the season. So that surprised me. Well, I'm president of the Kenny Dougal fan club. I don't really <laughs> knew that, but uh, I'll join. So. <laughs> we we love him. We absolutely love Kenny. We were gutted. I mean, we don't know what went on. Something went on behind the scenes. Um, now, whether it was, you know, obviously he's, he's originally from Australia, and and he, I think he, he's he's obviously got some a Thai background, and I think his mother's Thai, and um. And, and all of a sudden he stopped playing and even when he wasn't injured, it was like he's being rested and we weren't really told what was going on. It went on and on. It became clear it wasn't just resting him because uh, he was he was proving to be incredibly influential again for us this season. And then next thing he's gone and joined a team in the Thai League. So um, we've lost him. At, and, it, and, and it, yeah, get disappointing because he he's, he's, a, he's a quality central midfield player at this level. Um, did, didn't really stand out in the championship, although you know, um, you know he did okay. But at this level, he's superb, and he was instrumental in us getting up during the uh, COVID year and uh, scored two goals. That we have a song about him about scoring two goals at Wembley on on that on that in that particular game. And uh, yeah, and we've missed him again. One of the, probably one of the reasons why we aren't slightly higher up the league than we, than we actually are. And you you replaced it well replaced me if that's the right word in January with George Bias from the team that won't be named. Yeah. Um, and we uh, I don't know how he's doing for you. I think he, I know he's currently injured. I don't know if he's still be injured. Um, we had a lot of time for George Bias because we think he's a a good player. And a, a number of our fans wished that we'd signed him. You know, living near yeah. near to Sheffield. Yeah. Um, he went. He went. To, to be honest, I've not. I've not. Been a bit busy at work this week, so I've not kept abreast of things. He went off injured on on Saturday. That's right, yeah. Um, but he's... I don't know whether he's. I don't. I, we don't tend to get a lot of information out of our club about where things stand. They, they sort of keep the cards close to the chest for uh, obvious reasons. So whether he's likely to be involved on Saturday or not, I don't know. But he, we, we've looked, we've looked better because we we have we signed Oli, Oliver Nolburn from um, mm. uh, from Peterborough. And we had great expectations from him, and he's the captain. 
But there's a general view that, and, when, and I don't necessarily think it's his fault. I just think it's the way the team sets up. We seem to play a far more negative style of football when Oliver Norman plays than when Byers plays. I think Byers is a little bit more forward thinking. Mm. Um, now, whether that's on instruction for the manager or whether it's just the way that Norman now plays, I don't know. But So we might see Norman come back in if, if Byers is out. Uh, we've also got Morgan, who we signed from... Um, from Charlton last year, who, who was doing quite well, but's been injured for last few last few weeks, few months. Uh, who's who's now back in contention. So you never pick you can never pick a Critchley team. So whatever you think, whatever you think's going to happen, probably won't. Other than we'll play three five two or five <laughs> three two, whatever you want to call it. So we've, we've talked about a few players. Who would you say from you know for Barnsley fans? Who would mm. you say that we ought to watch out for that will catch our eye? There's there's only one player uh, that that well you know I'm not not being disrespectful to the others but there's one player who will catch everybody's eye and that's Dembele. Yeah. Um, he has um, he's not the finished article, but he has made this, this he's lit up this season for Blackpool fans because the things he does um, other players just aren't capable of doing and and if there's a criticism of him it's that his final ball sometimes lets him down and when he when he sorts that out. Is going to be one hell of a player, but that's that's what you get. I mean, we had Kieran Dewsby Hall playing for us a few years ago, just before the um, the season ended, and 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 he he was brilliant for us. And then obviously then went to Luton and did the same thing. And and it, and for me, if you're going to take players in on loan, they're the ones you want. You know, they're the ones who who you, they're getting a chance to play. We've sent Rob Apter to Tranmere this year, and he's won uh, the young player of League Two and we're now looking forward to him coming back and making our team and and in the same way wherever wherever Dembele ends up he's he's going to entertain crowds for years to come. He looks about 14. Um <laughs> in fact he look he looks like um the, the uh the, going right back you remember this the the, the, the um, little lad on uh, different strokes you know he's oh, that yeah, he's that yeah. small but he, he's 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 but what he hasn't got in physique he makes for makes up for in his heart and and he's and and the skills in those two size four feet or whatever he has, you know, because he, and you saw the goal on Saturday, you know, first minute, he's run through and slotted it home. And most of our, if he's not setting them up, he's scoring them. And um, he's the he's a player that you will need to stop. And I know that I've well, I've seen that he's he tends to have been picked lately in the in the centre. But he drifts mm. out to the wings. Which which wing would he particularly drift out to, or is it either? No, no, no normally right. Um, yeah. but you know, it it will it, he'll, he'll 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 go either way. Um, but yeah, we effectively sitting like the number ten role behind the strikers, and and yeah. almost, um, and it's taken a while for the manager to really realise this. That that's the way to play him. Um, I mean, he dropped him again. You know, when we needed to win points, he dropped him against Wick and said he needed a rest. At home on East, I think it was Easter Monday, um, which was which was frustrating for Blackpool fans because he's the only creative outlet we really we re we've really got, and um, uh, yeah, he'll, you just he'll just pop up all over the pitch, he'll win headers against people twice the size of him, he'll be on the floor but still come away with the ball um, and try so he'll try some stuff that won't come off, but we love that. And, and I think most fans do. But Charlie Adam, when he was with us, used to be able to do whatever he wanted, and yeah. no, and he never got any size or booze or criticism because we knew we were watching somebody who shouldn't really be playing for us in the Quality first place. Player. Quality yeah, and, player, and um, uh, and 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 that gives them confidence, doesn't it? It gives them confidence. So you know, you'll hear a lot of Dembele chants. You'll hear a lot of encouragement for him, and um, hopefully. In his last, what's likely to be his last ever game for us at home, he's going to turn it on. Well, we can all hope for that, can't we? But personally, I hope that um, I don't want I don't want the lad to burn out for the rest of his career. Yeah. So I think maybe you know, he maybe he's in the rest. Hey, listen, Neil Neil Critchley might well oblige. We can't tell. We Come can't on, tell. Neil. You know it makes sense, Neil. Do uh, it, if, Neil. Just do if it. If he doesn't start Dembele on Saturday, um, I'll eat my hat, though. I think I, 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 he's got to play him. We've got to win. Draw's no good to us. We've got to win. Let me ask you this, then. In in, in the in, in red all over, we've got a... a I've not brought him with me. We've got a, a teddy bear. That's got, it's the red all over teddy bear called Tumble Down Ted. Mm. And... 
he sometimes plays for us, but he often plays for the opposition. And you, you, you'll you'll know him because he's he's a bit bit like Tom Daly that tumble down Ted. If he's in the penalty area or just outside the penalty area, he'll go down like there's a sniper in the crowd. Yeah, now, yeah. we've got a couple of them. We've got a couple. Who would I, I think you might have already said him? <laughs> who, who's Who's likely who's to be your tumble down, Ted? Who's who's going down? I think it's Dembele again. I think. I think yeah, I know. Um, I think. I'd have said Jordan Rose, you see, but if he's not playing, it can't be him. No, no, no. Jo Jordan, Jordan won't be adverse to. Uh, oh, uh, no. oh, I to know. Creating a penalty oh, situation, but no, oh, I, no. I think I think in, because he's the he's the player who will drive into the box, and uh, he's the player. Listen, I'm not saying he's the old. You know, we've got other players. Who've got the ability to do it? Uh, Coulson, who's on loan on the left on the on the left wing back spot, yeah. um, you know, and I don't know who's going to play. Um, we've got we've got CJ Hamilton, who generally plays on the right wing. He's fast, but mm. um, it can really blow hot and cold uh, more often cold. And um, uh, but it, he he sometimes drives into the box as well and picks up the odd penalty. So it won't just be they will be the they would probably be the three. That I would say are are the are the most likely, um, and we're not sure who who's going to start up front um, at the moment. Beasley, um, who was like fourth choice, seems to be first choice at the moment, and then he'll either play Lavery or he'll play Joseph. I hope he plays Joseph because um, Lavery is a bit low on confidence at the moment, but um, we don't know. Oh, and, and Kowasi, who played against you, had a fantastic game. Away at Barnsley, I don't think he'll start, but there's a chance he might be on the subs bench. I can just see, you know, one one all, and it's in added time. You know, that pro probably the 35th minute of added time, given how yeah. it's gone this season. And you get a corner or a free kick, and it floats over, and all of a sudden you have three players go down, clutching their ankles, claiming a penalty. Referee won't know what the hell to do. Yeah, they'll, yeah exactly. they'll give you a penalty though if it's if, if the Portsmouth game's anything to go by. Yeah. I mean, what I will say is, you, I mean, you beat us at Oakwell on a penalty, and and on our show that we recorded last night. I mean, I'll put the record straight. It was definitely a penalty. O'Keefe yeah. took him out. It was clearly a penalty. But last night, at the side of my three colleagues, I recorded with, I kept saying we were robbed. We were robbed. <laughs> he never touched him. He went. He went down like a good one. Nobody was near him. Nobody touched him. But I can put the record straight. <laughs> we owed him. Yeah. It was a penalty. Yeah. I just, I just, I just lied on our show. That, that's all. <laughs> I, did. I just. Well, you got, you got to be a bit poetic license, doesn't it? Come on. It's, yeah, there's a limit. That, even for me, there's a limit. You know, <laughs> I've, I've got my set for you know set, set phrases. You know, we were robbed. The referees are wrong, and it done us. We should have had a penalty. All that a game of two halves, and it often is with Barnsley. We sometimes we usually play pretty decently in one half, but not so much the other half. So yeah. it's all strange anyway. So what, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on the game then? Come Saturday, uh, well, it's, it's do or die for us. I said, I think we've almost got like a get out of jail card that we're in the, in the situation we're in. I mean, even if you'd said to us even two or three weeks ago, you'll you'll be in the, with the chance of getting the playoffs. You know, come the the the, the last Saturday before the season, we we'll, we're all saying no, it won't happen. It won't happen. We will, um, and it probably it's probably less what we've done and more that other teams have dropped points that we perhaps weren't expecting. And perhaps we should have done, you know, but um, I think we go into it. We go into it with very low expectations. And that and that's that's based on the fact that we aren't playing particularly well, um, despite the um the, the one nil the few one nil results that we've pulled in. But we have got the ability to turn it on against, particularly against the better sides. And as I said at the start of the show, most certainly most Blackpool fans would would label Barnsley. You you're not likely to come and shut up shop. And try and negate us. You're going to come and try and win the game, and that could make for a, quite an entertaining spectacle. Hopefully, um, now who wins it? If I'm if I'm honest, I don't think we deserve to be in the playoffs. But you know, maybe that's I'm a bit jaundiced because I don't like the system. But that that's the view I've got. But we're here, and we we've got a chance, and we're relying on others. But I, th I do think if we win both our last two games on our, our last game, of course, it's typical to Blackpool, we'll beat you, and then we'll go and get stuffed at Reading on okay. uh, the following Saturday. But I, if, I think if we win both of our games, I actually do think we'll we'll make it. And once we get there, we are the playoff kings. 
There's yeah. nobody with a better playoff record than Blackpool. Um, You've not got Kenny, though. You've not got Kenny. We, have, but... we, haven't, we haven't got two goal Kenny. No. Um, but no, we are. We, we'll go into it with low expectations, but I think we're going to get behind the team. We're going to give it everything we can. Um, I, I don't know whether Critch is going to throw the kitchen sink at it or whether he's going to play cautiously. He, he's, he's, his modus operandi is to play cautiously. So it would be against... Um, it would be against his usual pattern of play to go at it, but it, it is it's it is it, it's one of those games now, isn't it? Where it's a flip of a card. You know, you yeah. might if you don't if you don't go for it. The reality is you, you're unlikely to get there because right. it's 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 sudden death, isn't it? I think I'd be very very surprised if we went if we approach this game defensive minded because mainly. We can't defend very well. Mm-hmm. If we if we set up defensively, we ain't going to do it. The mm-hmm. the only way that that we're going to achieve anything is and when we've looked at our best is when we close down quickly, when we press quickly, and gone for it, taking people on and gone for it. You know, yeah. defending the opposition half of the opposition penalty area, just go for it. Otherwise, it, you could you could easily beat us if we if we approach this in a de- defensive way. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we'll see, won't we? We'll see. Yeah, there should be there should be good atmosphere. Um, I mean, we're, yeah. we're a bit frust- it's a bit frustrating at Blackpool because the way the the way the stadium is set up at the moment, um, it doesn't lend itself to large away followings because the police don't. Um, I don't know you've been, uh, but it, it, we have the. I, I have um, been. I'm not coming yeah, on Saturday, but I've been. A few yeah, times, there's a temporary. So. There's a temporary stand. What was the temporary stand? We went to the Premier League down the side of the pitch, the east, and the police don't like. The whole of that end being given to away fans, and and um, because it, they they think it creates issues. So so at the moment, um, we're li- we're limiting away fans to about two thousand in the south part of the east. Um, but yeah, there should should nevertheless still be a, a good atmosphere. I, I, I think there'd be somewhere between twelve and thirteen thousand there, and and when there's that number in in Bloomfield Road, it, it's because it's quite enclosed. It normally makes for a good atmosphere. Um, and most most Blackpool fans would wish, you know, we give a few more to away fans just to, you know, fill the ground if nothing else. But um, yeah, they they don't seem to have the appetite for it. They did it a few times last season with Derby, um, and I've forgotten who else they did it with. Now there's about three or four teams last year who came. And they gave them four thousand, um, but the the police just don't like it, and that seems to be dictating the decision making over how many we give to away fans. So we get a lot of grief off. Bolton and um, Preston when Preston come about how many we give and and um, and they reciprocate then and give us reduced allocations when we go away. Carlisle wanted to bring four thousand and we only let them have two, so it is a shame. I, I prefer to you know have fifteen, sixteen thousand crowds in when when we've got a game like we've got on Saturday, but. It all helps with the coffers, doesn't it? The club's coffers. Yeah, yeah. This, that's the bit I don't understand. We have got plans to redevelop the east, and once it's redeveloped, I think they'll have a rejig of. Yeah. Of, of, to make sure that you know when there is a big game, and you know if we if we let if we're artificially reducing our waste sport by two thousand every game, that's fifty sixty thousand pounds plus secondary spend that we're losing every time we we do that, and we've done it at least three or four times this season. So you know I'd rather that money goes into the club and and um, and, and and you know and the and the and we have and we create the great atmospheres that having a larger way following bring, but. Unfortunately, you are stuck with two, as everybody else has been this season. Yeah. So, I know we've sold out our allocation of two thousand. Yeah. Uh, what one one of one of my colleagues on Red All Over, Alan Smith, who's um, four months older than me, he's seventy and it's a big four months. I can tell you that. <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll like to hear this. He he's coming. He's coming over. I, th- I think he's. I think he's come. He might be coming on Friday. He's he's, he's stop. You know, he's stopping. He's stopping over. So. Um, no doubt to have some fish and chips on the sea front. Oh, as hopefully well. the weather's hopefully the weather's going to improve. I mean, actually, it's been quite. It's really weird though. It's probably the same over here, yeah. but there's yeah. been plenty of sun out this week. But it's been bitterly cold. Um, so it's about time it warmed up a bit. I think. I'm I'm just going to advise Alan not to go on the beach because I don't want anybody to confuse him. I think he's he's a Blackpool donkey. I don't, <laughs> don't, want, don't want any anything like that. He came out on our show with they'll be on the beach, Blackpool donkeys, and. I think it was me that said it'll be a roller coaster of a game. You, yeah. You've got to get the you've got to get the cheap jibes in. The um, there's some strange sights to be had on that on that seafront. So tell him to be careful. <laughs> oh well, I certainly will do, Tim. 
Let me ask a couple of last questions then. We've got, a, you, you might know this, we've got a couple of, uh, 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 the, the chairman and treasurer of our uh, of, of Red All Over, there's a guy called Tom Webster and he's got, um, well, they're now 11 year old. They've been predicting for the last couple of years and All right. asking questions, you know, saying, can you predict better than a nine year old? Can you predict better than a 10 year old? And some, often people can't because yeah. one of them nearly won it the other last, you know, early on this season. Uh, so now they're 11 years old and, Although they're called George and Isaac, they um, they call themselves Little Alan and Andy, for, right. enough, for me and Alan Smith. And I think they've got delusions of grandeur myself, even at eleven. And I'm not gonna not gonna squash their aspirations to become the new Andy Simcox and Alan Smith. I, I just think they want to, or just to one side, thinking that we're a bit old and that we need to to make way for younger talent like them. So I think yeah. they're trying to take over bit by bit. So they've got a couple of questions that they'd like to ask you. So right. I'm going to put them on now and get them to ask you the first question. Can you remember your first away game or are you too old like Andy? Yeah. Actually, my first ever away game was against Preston. Uh, and it was it was in 1982. So I'll be, I'll be about 15 again, because I think I said to you in the show, um, I sort of brought up a Liverpool fan and then migrated across to Blackpool. And we drew him in the second round of the FA Cup. And uh, we hadn't played Preston at all the time I'd watched us. So I was really dying to go. And we took about 5,000 away. And these are the days when the crowds weren't that big out anywhere, really, because early 80s. And um, so there's 14,000 at, at Preston. And we lost. We lost 2-1. So that wasn't the most auspicious of starts. So, um, and... Uh, that followed on from, um, so we haven't done a particularly great record at, at Preston other than um, during the period like when Charlie was here and um, there's been the odd, odd result, but generally they've they've had the beating of us at, at Deepdale. So, um, and that was one of them, unfortunately, but it was the biggest crowd in, in the Lee, in the um, FA Cup second round. And it was a fantastic atmosphere. So it sticks with me. Even now, you know, it was one of my greatest ever away days just for the just for the day, really, more than anything else. Can you remember your first home game? I can. My, my two of my first games were not were not I should have learned and just and, and not stuck with Blackpool. It was nil nil. Uh and it was against Plymouth. And I actually Googled the date of it, um, which was the tenth of March nineteen seventy nine. So um I went with my mates. We mate and his dad, because my dad was a Liverpool fan, and um, and we went to watch him, and uh, it wasn't very good. Um, but I was hooked, you know. I went there, and the, we had the cop then with the roof on it, and um, you know, half decent crowd, if I remember rightly. Probably not as many as I thought as ever, as it actually was. You know, look, when you're a young kid, you always first time you go in a football ground, it's wow, isn't it? And um, yeah, but so a nil a nil nil home start and a 2-1 away defeat from a first away game so it didn't get it didn't get much better for a long time because we we're in the <laughs> lower leagues for 30 years before um before we got back um into the championship in nine in 2007 so it was a long wait to see some decent football you've had your moments of glory in the premier league as well we've not done we're that. We haven't done bad to, actually since my eldest lad started watching about 2000 We've had a great run, you know, because we had quite a few LDV wins. Um, yeah. We we played, you know, we had the we um, we'd had two playoff games in the early nineties, but after that we hadn't really had anything. And then we've had a run. We had Yeovil, we had uh, Cardiff, we had West Ham. Um, we didn't go to the Exeter one when we beat them to get back in the League One because it was during the boycott. Um, and then we had the one, um, uh, the last one during the COVID years, which I was we we're lucky enough to get tickets for, even though. There's only about, I've forgotten how many wet was allowed in now. It was about 8,000 in Wembley, yeah. which is a bit yeah. soul destroying. But Yeah, not enough. Right. Come to the second question then, Tim, if you don't mind. So I'll put them on for their second question. Why don't you support a good team like Man City or Liverpool or best of them all, Barnsley? Well, um, from the, I did support Liverpool because um, I was. Can I just say it again, Tim? Ian. You're a wrong one. Right, yeah, yeah. Keep, keep going again. I've sorted it out for you, Tim. I did support Liverpool. Uh, so when I, I watched Kenny Dalglish play when he first signed and, and, and whatever, and I saw him win a couple of leagues. But 
one there's nothing can beat supporting your hometown club. There's there's something incredibly special about it. And from the first time I went, when I, I was what was I then eleven? I think I just I might have just started. Yeah, I just started sitting in the first year at secondary school. So that was my first that was my first game. Second year secondary school, I started going with all my mates. Um, and I really, really enjoyed it. And and to be honest, Blackpool, um, we had Alan Ball in in, in about 1980-81, and we dropped right. We had to apply for re-election in 1982-83 from you know, so it was re- it was a really bad time to start sporting Blackpool, I'll tell you. So it wasn't for the glory. I think we were down to <laughs> sub two thousand crowds at one point, but I was hooked. And um, you know, once once it's in your DNA, it, that's it, isn't it? It's stuck with you for life. And uh, so I wouldn't change a thing. You know, it's it's my team. I, I you can probably see behind me. I've got that's a shirt from the two thousand and seven playoff final. I'm not allowed any memorabilia at home. It has to be all be at work. <laughs> and 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 the football stadiums, <laughs> the football stadiums like. Um, I, well, then, when I come to the games, I park my car here and at my office and just walk down. So I'm, I'm literally like 500 yards away from the ground where I work. So, um, one, yeah, Blackpool through and through. I don't even watch if Liverpool. I'm telling you, I wouldn't even watch them if you paid me. You know, I, I don't really watch Premier League. I'm, I'm all about live football. Um, even when we stopped going during the boycott years, we went to Germany and watched football, and we went to watch some of the other local sides just to get a football fix really. Um so yeah, that's me. You can't can't do better than support your own club. Can't no. do better than that. Did you and, and, and and as we always say in our podcast, um we have a Ballon de l'Or winner, which no which not many teams in the uh in, in the football league can say that they have. Um and um we we participated in the best FA Cup final ever. So uh, the 1953 Cup final when um, Stanley Matthews yeah. tore, tore uh, Bolton apart in the last 20 minutes and um, Stan Morton got the only ever hat-trick in the FA Cup final. That's right, yeah. The so, year before uh, I was born. Well, my, 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 my so number, long ago, Tim. I'm my surprised plate, you remember. I'd, well, I was, it was before my time. But my <laughs> number know. plate is, on my car is TF, which my, is my initials, 53 CUP. So that's my, you know, and and it's got. I think it's. I think the fifty three cup final is a special place, in in most football fans' hearts, but most certainly Blackpool. It's like stamps stamps on the heart, and uh, and and it was Stanley Matthews who was the first ever Ballon d'Or winner. So um, there's quite a few clubs in the Premier League who can't say that they've got one of them. No, a fabulous player as well, mm. an absolutely fabulous player. I mean, he he played till he were about ninety seven, I think. Well, he stopped. He stopped playing for us when he was. I think he was either forty-seven or forty-eight, yeah. and then he went back to Stoke, and he played for them for a couple of years. Got them promoted back into what's now the Premier League, and then um, and then retired at fifty. And he's. I think he said yeah. that he retired too early, <laughs> uh, and he was still playing. He was playing all over the world. Um, in he, he was one of the first players to go and um, do work in Africa, um, and he set up clubs over there and. Um, I think he was still playing in Malta till he was about 65, 70. So in- incredibly, incredible athlete. And uh, it, I just, one of those things where I met him, but sort of, you know, he, he used to come to the mm. a few games, particularly when we played Bolton and things like that. I mean, that loft house would walk the teams out. But yeah, I'd love to have seen him play. Yeah. Well, well one last thing before I talk about predictions. This is just, just from my interest, really. Who do you class as your local rivals Preston I, th- I thought so I, got, I was trying to work out if it'd be Preston Bolton which is a bit further away and all mm-hmm. that I, th- I thought it would probably be Preston Preston Preston's the big one I mean um, obviously we've had we've had Fleetwood in, in our league yeah. for a few yeah. years now well obviously we haven't the championship but over the last five or six years we've played them quite a lot and we call that the tram stop derby um, because literally you can get a tram from on the seafront of <laughs> yeah. Blackpool right to yeah. their ground. Oh, been, yeah. Um, but yeah, we for the youngest of supporters, um, Fleetwood is viewed as a bit of a derby. For a lot of the older ones, Fleetwood were never in the league, and all the mm. ads in Fleetwood you support Blackpool. So, um, or might if they weren't supporting Liverpool or Man United, uh, and um. Uh, and so I, I don't really, I, I don't have the same thing when we play Fleetwood. It- what I normally do when it comes to predictions, Tim, I know I, when I'm talking to um, an away fan 
or in your case, a home fan, an opposition mm. fan, I usually lie through my back teeth and mm. say, oh, you're going to beat us 2-1 or it's going to be 1-0, it's going to be 1-0. And I always predict 2-1 to Barnsley. So on our show, I, I predicted 2-1 to Barnsley, so I'm not going to lie to you. Um, mm. that, that's what I predicted. And, you know, sometimes I just want to make you feel good about yourself by saying, <laughs> you know, you, you'll beat us 4-1 or something like that. I don't think there's any chance of us scoring four. Well, <laughs> you might not. I think there's a decent chance we might concede that. We're, we're not bad at conceding, Lee. Well, that's that said. You know, we got four, we got four against Portsmouth, then we got four against Bolton. So, yeah, who knows? Um, yeah, but we you could only beat Carlisle with one goal, and that were in the first minute. So that, that yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's not going to be that. I, I'm looking forward to an entity. What do you think it's going to be then, Tim? Go on, t- tell me. Well, what well based on think. based on our recent based on our recent um, stats, I would say if we win, it will be a one nil. But to be honest, I, I mean that's what that if you're looking at, if you're looking at sort of the form guide, that's what you'd say. But what I would say is, and it goes back to a comment made earlier. If you come to play football and come and have a go at us, I think that will bring the best out of us, and maybe we'll see a few goals. Maybe we will. I hope we do. I hope. What well, listen, whatever happens on Saturday, I hope it's a great game of football because, um, from a Blackpool's perspective, I want me, I want my team to go out and attack and play attractive football, not this negative stuff and trying to score one and then shut up shop. I'd rather go down fighting and, and entertaining than play that type of football. So listen, I hope we go out. I hope we throw caution to the wind and I hope that whoever does win is the deserved winner. That's, that's what I want at the end of the day. That would be, that. that's a, a fine epitaph. I, I think though, I, I think though, I would hope, you know, I, I would want that as well, Tim, except for Barnsley win, obviously. But if it meant it was going to be the worst game I've ever seen in my life and we won 5-0, I'd take that on Saturday. <laughs> but generally, generally, we want to see a good game of football. It's an entertainment business. It's something we enjoy doing, isn't it? We want, yeah, yeah. We don't want, we don't want to be bored. We want yeah. to watch good football. So, so there we are. We'll leave it there, Tim. All I can say is thank you. It's been an no. absolute pleasure no tomorrow. problem. Okay, then, and, mate. And, and apart from tomorrow, good luck. <laughs> Not tomorrow, but Saturday we're Saturday. on. We? Probably Saturday. tomorrow when you put the show out, won't it? Yeah, it's Friday. It's Thursday evening tonight, Tim. I know, you know, I know you're yeah. at work. And it's, I'm, 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 it's I'm, I'm so excited for Saturday. I can't wait for it to come around. That's what it is. I'm hoping for a really good game, mate. Take care and thank you. Thank you for your contribution. No problem. Bye. Finally. Kenneth Wilson said in 1966, there are some people on the pitch, they think he's read all over, it is now.